hello, 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 glad you're here, how's it going, it's Thursday night, it's April Fool's Day, hence the reason I have the world's ugliest shirt on, <laughs> my daughter was looking at this shirt, she goes, nice shirt, dad, I said, yeah, isn't this like the worst, she says, yeah, can I borrow it and take it to college, <laughs> okay, I almost said, no, it's my terribly ugly shirt. And she's like, but, you know, she's my kid, and we make sacrifices for our children. All right, speaking of sacrifices, I'm going to sacrifice my sobriety. There it is. <laughs> so April Fool's Day, uh, this may be the most foolish thing I've done, uh, is during this particular uh, whiskey. And there is a distinction that is not a bourbon, although it could be. We'll talk about that. But this is Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. Clocks in at 133.8 proof. This is almost the most potent whiskey I have in my collection. I have one, maybe two, but one for sure that I know is heavier octane than this, and it's Old Homicide. It comes from the Ernest uh, Cirillo, something like that, distillery uh, up yonder. It's an Ohio distillery, uh, and we will be profiling that this summer, but, but I wanted to get into this because it's April Fool's Day, and why the hell not? Uh, let's get it open so it can start to uh, mm -hmm. breathe. I always risk that dreaded neck pour when I when I don't open it ahead of time and let it sit. Why is this not opening where I want it to open? There we go. Sometimes you just gotta use the pliers God gave you. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so this is this is a heavy duty plastic. Really? Really? <laughs> well, it's open. It's going to be messy. I've almost got it. <laughs> uh, it smells good. <laughs> okay, so this one was bottled February 6th of 2019. There's no age date. I don't know how long it aged. Uh, there is a rumor that it ages between four and seven years, but I don't know. Don't know. Um, all I know is that this is going to kick my butt. Now, I have had Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof one other time. Excuse me. Uh, Christmas of 2019. Uh, it's not going to be the same barrel. It's not going to be the same batch. It's going to be completely different. I will tell you I am not a fan of Jack Daniels. I have never been a fan of Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, old number seven or whatever, that that to me is something that you put with something else. It's a mixer. I, it's sweet and, well, in full disclosure, I got really sick on it one time. As a matter of fact, I got so sick on so much Jack Daniels that it tainted my ability to drink bourbon for probably... 25 years. That's where I was a beer guy and a wine guy and a vodka guy and a gin guy and finally decided to be a Mario and get back into the bourbons again and the whiskeys and, and uh, it was successful. I started with uh, Jim Beam. I actually had a bottle of Jim Beam from my wedding that I had never opened. So I opened it. Doesn't go bad if you keep good care of it and I kept good care of it. And it wasn't great, but it was a good place to start. And, and, I, and I didn't retch when I smelled it, and that helped <laughs> a little bit. So, uh, yeah. So there we go. Cruise on over here and see if anybody's talking. I don't see anybody talking yet, so all good. We'll just keep going. All right, so this is the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. A lot of people like barrel proof whiskeys. Because that gives them a little bit of control over how strong they want their whiskey to be. You can add water to it, ice to it, 
things like that and control it yourself. Whereas there is a product that Jack Daniels had that used to be 90 proof. They took it down to 80 proof. You can't increase the proof of a whiskey once you buy it. it that's what it is. This you can kind of control the proof because, yes, it's 133.8 in this bottle, but that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. I got water, I got ice, I got a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to be playing with it. We're not going to do a whole lot with it. I can't drink a whole lot of this tonight. I've got stuff to do after we're done with the Burbcast, and I've got to be able to function. Um, so we're not going to go too crazy. The other thing that you need to know, uh, this will be the first sip of anything alcoholic that I've had since last Saturday when we did the Burbcast on National Whiskey Day. We did uh, the Scotch, uh, the, the Balvenie, uh, the Doublewood, and I have not had a drop since that night. Um, as somebody who's used to having at least a glass of whiskey every night, that, that was an adjustment period. Uh, but I'm coming through the other side of it just in time for tonight's birdcast. It'll put me right back at zero. <laughs> Let's get this poured. So, uh, the people that I read online said that it should be tasted in a Glencairn glass. So we're going to honor that. I don't know why. Normally, I would drink what, we, what is essentially a bourbon out of the bourbon trail glass because it's a little bit wider flute and um, gives, me, gives me the ability to get a good nose, but not so concentrated that you would like a scotch, like a blended scotch. So this is obviously not a blend. It's a single barrel. So, But they said use it out of Glen, Glencairn glass, so okay, I will. So, uh, interesting things about Mr. Jasper Daniels. That was Jack Daniels' name, Jasper Daniels. Rumor has it that he was born in 1850, but that can't be true because his mom died. Well, no, his mom died in uh, 1847, so somebody's lying. Uh, Jack Daniels himself never had a wife, never had kids, didn't have anybody to leave anything to. I think he left some, things, left, left some stuff to his nephews and so on, but as far as actual heirs, didn't have any. As a matter of fact, he himself was an orphan by his own choice. When he was young, his dad died. His dad was married to his stepmother. His stepmother and he didn't get along very well, so he left home at a relatively young age and considered himself an orphan and traveled around and eventually got into the whiskey business with a friend of his. So uh, kind of an interesting stuff about uh, Jasper Daniels, Jasper Newton Daniels. Uh, there is a rumor that he got angry and kicked a safe, causing gangrene, which killed him. Now, his biographer says that Jack Daniels did not die from that. Jack Daniels died of a blood poisoning. Couldn't that be one and the same thing? I'm no doctor, but gangrene, blood poisoning, sounds like it could work to me. Who knows? Uh, it's just me. Uh, I don't know anything. So, yeah. Uh, so those are just a couple of tidbits uh, about Jack, Jack Daniels. Um, so oh, we talked a little bit about why this can't be called bourbon. And uh, I'm just going to check things real quick, make sure that we're running and doing well, because I'm getting all sorts of messages over here, and I just want to make sure that we're actually running, because if we're not, I'm going to be feeling like a fool. There we go. got to turn on my sound. Well, it, okay, I, I guess we're rolling. I guess we're doing it. Uh, I'm going to go back to the software and make sure we have sound. We do. Okay. All right. All right. Sometimes you just got to check stuff. Okay. So why isn't Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof a bourbon? For all intents and purposes, it is. It follows the rules as far as bourbons go. 51% corn, brand new barrels, oak barrels, charred oak barrels, uh, at least 80 proof. Um, it, it, it follows the rules as far as bourbons go. Turns out that the distinction about bourbons wasn't quite hoity-toity enough for Jack Daniels and other 
distillers in Tennessee who decided they needed another distinction called Tennessee whiskey. In order to be a Tennessee whiskey, you have to essentially be a bourbon, but then you also have to be made in Tennessee, and you have to follow a certain filtering process, which is named after a county in Tennessee. It's called the Lincoln County Process. And it's a, it's, it's a charcoal, charcoal mellowing. So basically what Jack Daniels does is they get maple wood and they turn it into charcoal and then they very slowly filter their drink through that charcoal. Um, that met with a bit of controversy. Not every Tennessee whiskey does that. And because of that, they can't call themselves Tennessee whiskey. There is one distiller that is grandfathered from calling himself, from not being able to call himself Tennessee whiskey because he didn't want to use that process. And that is uh, I don't see it now. Benjamin Pritchards. And they were annoyed by the idea that Tennessee whiskey had to be done that way because they basically said, look. If we wanted to taste like Jack Daniels, we'd be Jack Daniels. Can't argue with that. Now, the one distinction that may have changed, and as far as I know, didn't, I did all sorts of research trying to find it and just didn't have any luck, was the single charred oak barrel. There was legislation that went around in 2014 in Tennessee where they were going to allow it to still be called Tennessee whiskey, but they were going to allow the distilleries to use their barrels more than once. The charred oak barrels that they age their whiskey in. Bourbon says every barrel has to be a newly charred oak barrel. That doesn't mean you can't do it twice. But Tennessee, because they had um, younger, newer distilleries wanting to open that didn't have the money to have new oak barrels all the time, um, they wanted to open it up so you could do more than one oak barrel. The problem with that is the unions got involved with that a little bit and said, no, we have union people who make our barrels. And if you use a barrel twice, that cuts down half the work, right? So there'll be layoffs, there'll be, it'll be a mess. Jack Daniels actually makes all of their own barrels on premise, uh, as well as everything else. So they're, they're definitely, they're, I understand that they are the number one selling whiskey in the U.S. Uh, I always thought that was Jim Beam, but the website says Jack Daniels is. Now, this isn't the Jack Daniels is the best selling one. This one is a little harder to find, but it is out there and it's doing well. So, okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we've been in this for 13 minutes and I haven't sipped anything yet. So uh, April Fool's Day, Foolish Shirt. Fullest amount of proof, 133.8. Here we go. The nose. It's got a bit of a cereal overtone to it. Definitely big on caramel for me. Vanilla. The ethanol is there. Oh boy. I, I've had worse though. It's not like singeing the nose hairs, but it's got a sweet nose to it. The mash bill on this, the mash bill on this is rumored to be 80% corn, 8% rye, and 12% malted barley. That's a, that's a big corn statement, 80%. So this is going to have a sweeter taste to it anyway before we do anything. Uh... Now, one of the things I heard about the nose on this particular bottle is that I might catch banana. There were three different sniffers, <laughs> tasters, that, that wrote down banana in the nose. Yeah, I'm not getting that. I'm getting vanilla and, and the lighter caramel. Um, I'm, not, I'm not getting banana. I mean, I really got to concentrate to get banana. I could convince myself. I could convince myself that I smell Brut by Fabergé.
So it's always during the burp cast that my dogs decide that they're hungry and thirsty. And if one isn't eating out of the bowl, they're eating their own body underneath my table. Hey, if I could reach. All right, here we go. Well, there it is. Ha! Pooh, smoke. That's good. Um, so the bloom is kind of slow. Boy, those legs are interesting. I don't know how to identify that. Um, the bloom is slow and it doesn't get you up front. It's when you take that swallow that you're like, <laughs> um, The legs are not very good. I liked it on the nose and I liked it on the palate, but the aftertaste, the 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 finish. I don't know. Like grassy library paste. <laughs> uh, now the experience that I had a couple of years ago when I had this was different. Now this is a completely different barrel from a different location, different year, everything. Now the one I had a couple of years ago I really liked all the way through. This one is uh, the I liked I liked it on the palate and I liked it on the on the nose, but I can't say as though I love the finish. Let's give it another shot, shall we? Thirty-three point eight. Woo. Now early the finish is good. What I'm getting right now is good. Catching maybe some honey, some pepper, but that just could be the heat. But as it goes longer, it's got a long finish on it, and it probably shouldn't have. We'll see what this one does. The first one I didn't care for. We'll see what this one does. This finish may be a little bit easier. I don't know. Sweaty sweat sock doesn't make for a good finish, and that's kind of what it remind me of. You know, just this one's not bad. I mean, it, it's getting there. And 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 keep in mind too, this is a neck pour. It hasn't. It hasn't. Aerated really at all. It's sitting in a Glen Cane glass, which means it's not going to air out. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of credit where credit is due. And this time the finish isn't, isn't as bad. The legs are not um, gross. Um, the honey's hanging on. The notes, uh, gosh, I, I didn't write down the, the notes on the, um, on the finish. So I don't really know. Um, that's definitely better than the first one was. All right, so we're going to try this two other ways. Again, I can't go too crazy. I got stuff I got to do tonight. Um, but one of the things that they talked about was adding a little bit of water. Now they say that the water that you add won't necessarily take away a whole lot of the ethanol, but it will open up the flavors some. So maybe that'll help me identify some of this stuff. So let's just try it out. It's okay to add a decent amount when you have a proof that's 133.8. That's why we're talking about being able to control that proof. Excuse me, if I add water to it, I'm bringing that proof down. Alcohol by volume. All right. Let's give it a little stir. Yeah, it didn't really decrease the ethanol much at all. It's still getting that. Uh, in the same notes, I'm getting... Caramel and vanilla and maybe cereal overtones for me. If I convince myself, yeah, I can catch some banana, especially after I added some water to it. Uh, but I'm, I'm probably convincing myself. Hey, fruit. If 
by Fabergé. That did make it easier to pull out more flavors. I would have liked to have gone with maybe a cooler water. We'll get to that, though. Um, I don't think it changed much. I, I think adding some water just made it more drinkable. Again, adding cooler water may have made it a little bit more drinkable yet. This was, I mean, this is filtered. I took it out of the refrigerator filter, but it's no longer cold. So, one more. Same notes, vanilla, uh, caramel, cereal, black pepper. There's no, there's no citrus in this. I'm not detecting any fruit, anything like that. Normally I would go with like a dark fruit. I'm not catching any of that. Um, no maple syrup. I mean, it's not sweet. The, the Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof that I had, a year and a half ago for Christmas 2019 was sweeter than this. This does not have the sweetness that that had. Again, it's a completely different barrel. But that one reminded me of the flavor of Jack Daniels, which I don't care for, generally speaking. This one does not remind me of the character and the flavor that you would normally associate with Jack Daniels. This is something completely altogether different. It's not wrong. It's just different. And you're going to get that when you go with a single barrel. just doesn't taste like Jack Daniels to me, which is okay. It can stand on its own two feet. Hmm. It's got a little bit of the Jackiness in it, I guess. That's that caramel and vanilla. I always thought that Jack Daniels was too sweet. And there's a little bit of that in there. Back it up with some fire and a little bit more going on. Yeah. I mean, it's good. I would drink this, obviously. Um, I don't know that I'd put it anywhere in any kind of top of anything. Uh, I think the novelty behind this is just the heat. I mean, if you like Jack Daniels and you like heat, marry them together and you've got this. Uh, I remember the other one being a little bit better than this. Um, just in case you're curious, once again, this was uh, barreled. In uh, February of 2019, this is barrel number 19-00890. So, it's, okay. it's all right. It's okay. Um, I'm foolish enough to try it on April Fool's Day. All right, one more thing. We're going to put it over ice, and I did create new ice tonight. It isn't ready, so we'll go into that next week. Again, just continuing the process of ice spheres. Uh, so I, I don't want to pour this in there because I already added water to it. Let me reiterate something I said earlier. This is 133.8 proof. And I haven't had any alcohol since Saturday. So if I slur a little bit, I've earned it. <laughs> All right? Just wanted to say that again so you understand that if I slur, I'm getting it honestly. This is the second highest proof that I own. Old Homicide it being 140-ish is a higher proof. So let's try it cooled down a little bit. And then I'm probably going to pour that in there so I have the water as well. That way I'll have the ice, I'll have the whiskey, and I'll have the water. <laughs> We're going to dive in. <laughs> All right. Of all three expressions, Neat, water, 
ice. I like it on ice the best because the ice has not melted, but it's cooling the drink down, which lowers the amount of perceived ethanol, lowers that burn. I'm not getting that back here anymore. Um, and for me, the flavors didn't change when I used water on it. Maybe I didn't use enough water on it because of the high proof, but to me, the flavor didn't change really at all. And now cooling it down, I think I like this expression the best. Mm -hmm. I definitely like this expression the best. Everything, everything about it, when you put an ice ball in it, everything about it is better. Um, the, flavor com the flavors come out. Uh, it feels better on the tongue because it's cooled out. It's cooled down. And the legs are not the same. The legs carry that flavor throughout instead of changing into something that isn't palatable. Um, at room temperature, it is less tasty than on an ice ball. That's interesting. I think that's a first. That might be a first. Hmm. All right. Well, hey, uh, there you have it. It's uh, April Fool's Day. And we are trying, or tried, the Jack Daniels Single Barrel, Barrel Proof Whiskey, Tennessee Whiskey, which is bourbon with a few extra distinctions. Uh, we tried it neat. We tried it with water. Oop, hey, you know what I was going to do? <laughs> I got to just gotta do my due diligence. And we tried it on ice, an ice ball. Next week, we'll have fresh ice balls. I plan to spend the week making more and more so I don't run out like I almost did tonight. One more. So that's a mixture of the jack, the water, and the ice. And again, I will say my favorite expression of this is just the jack on the ice. If you need to mellow it out, create your own proof, be my guest, do what you want to do, it's your drink. <laughs> you can mix it with stuff if you want to. Uh, but I think if I just put it on an ice ball, that'll be enough to keep me happy through the night. I have just about uh, gotten to the point where I should stop, since I do have other things I've got to do tonight. Uh, if I do much more at 133.8 proof, I'm going to feel it, and I don't want to feel it. i got stuff to do. So I want to say thank you for joining me. Uh, it was April Fool's Day. Oh, by the way... Um, this is going to be the last broadcast we do for a while. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is the first drink I've had since Saturday. And I experienced difficulty sleeping and some anxiety, and that all says that I've been drinking too much. So we're going to stop doing this for probably about 10 months. And I've been drinking about a drink a night for about 10 years, so I'm thinking of probably take about 10 months to wean myself off. So this is the last one for about 10 months. April Fool! Did you see it coming? Did you see it coming? Did I trick you? Just say yes. <laughs> no, we're going to keep this going. This is fun. What are you kidding me? Come on. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you uh, next Thursday, if I don't catch you before. <laughs> Talk to you later.